I'm supposed to pick only one reason and tell you that's why SharePoint is better than Network Drive. That's view. In SharePoint, you can create views, while on the Network Drive, you cannot. Uh, but what are these views and how they can help us and why they are so important? That's the topic of this video. Let's get into it. Let's start this discussion with the definition of a view. A list or library in SharePoint may contain lots of items and fields. A view is how we see all or part of that information in our SharePoint page. This is my personal opinion, but I believe a view is the main reason that I prefer to have all my files in SharePoint instead of Network Drive, and I will show you why. We as users can use existing views created by SharePoint administrators, or if we don't like it, we can create our own views or we can customize the existing views to our own liking. And the best news is that creating and modifying views are easy. Now let's see how we actually do that. The first thing that I want to cover is how we can create a view for a SharePoint list or how we can modify views on a SharePoint list. For that, I created a list called products in SharePoint. And this list contains some random items, including DSLR camera, barbecue, or anything else. And every one of these products has category, weight, and unit price, just like a simple table or an Excel sheet. Now let's see it inside SharePoint and make changes into it. For this demo, I created a communication site. It's a modern site. And under that, I created a list called products list. When I click on it, you see exactly the list that I showed you in the PowerPoint slide. There are lots of things you can do in this default view that is created with every single list and library, and it's called all items. And as you can see on this pop-up, it's actually view options. I can actually sort it by categories. I can sort it by weight from the heaviest to the lightest, or I can make all the other filters in this view. Now, when it comes to views, we can do a lot more. As I told you, this is the view option. So if I click on it, we have the choice of creating a new view by copying the existing view. It's called save view as. We can also have the option to edit the current view. Most probably, if you're not a SharePoint administrator or a site owner, you don't see this menu item but you can always save the view as a new view and create your own personal view that is accessible only to yourself. And this is probably one way to make your other colleagues jealous. So if I click on the save view as, I can give it a name and I call it cheaper items. I can make it a public view because I'm the administrator, but if you cannot, you can always create your personal view. So for this example, I create a public view and I click on save. As you can see, cheaper items is created, which is the exact copy of all items. But while cheaper items is selected, I can edit the current view. And if I scroll down here, I can make lots of changes. Here you can see a list of columns available for this list. I can add or remove some of the columns I don't want to change the columns and I scroll down and I would say sort it by price. And I also want to apply a filter for it that by default it says show all items in this view. I can select this one says show items only when the following is true. And I can say when the unit price is less than hundred dollars. Of course, I can add more conditions, but I just keep it at this level and I click on OK. There's the new list. As you can see, sort has not changed. Categories are there, but you don't see anything above hundred dollars. And if you don't remember the items in the list, let me bring you here. You have a DSLR camera, which is worth $570 and you don't see it in this view anymore. So basically we see the cheaper items here and they are actually sorted descending by unit price. So from the most expensive to the cheapest one. Of course, at any moment, I can click 
on all items and I can see the original list or I can go to the cheaper items which is the view that I just created. Now let's get a little bit more creative. While cheaper items is, is selected I click on edit current view and now I want to see the list items in groups. So if I scroll down one of the items that you see is called group by. I expand it and as you can see there is no grouping yet but I can say group it by category and if I scroll down and I just click OK you will see different categories here. You see electronics, seasonal and stationary. If I expand every single one of them you will see the items right under that group. And of course if you go to edit current view there are tons of other options that you can change. You can add more fields, you can remove some of the fields, you can change the sort for example I want to sort it by title and I want to show them in actual alphabetical order. Uh, for the group by you have the choice of showing them expanded when someone opens the list and the sky is the limit so technically you can walk through every single one of them and expand it and see what's going on inside it and make the changes and see the effect on the actual site. So as you can see here now it is ordered alphabetically under each category and when I clicked on the product list it was actually expanded right in the beginning and of course your original list is there and because it's a public view everybody else can see it. Now let's get into a library and see what views can offer us for a library. Inside the library that I have in SharePoint I actually picked documents and under documents I created three folders called business, marketing and operation. And if I click on the business, you will see under business, I've already uploaded a couple of files. They are just dummy files, but I have effective date and I also have next revision date. So I can have a little bit more information to show you the flexibility and the value that you can get out of SharePoint views. So let's go back to SharePoint. And if I click on documents, you will see exactly the same list that I showed you. Now I can create my own view again. So if I click on save view as I will get a copy of the existing view. I can call it all files in one view and I can click save which is exactly the same copy of all documents. But this time I want to modify this view so that it shows me everything without folders. So everything inside every single folder is going to be displayed in a flat structure in one page. So if I scroll down here I would say under folders I can say show all items without folders. Now if I click on OK you will see I have all the documents including business documents including marketing documents, including operation documents. Now let's take it to the next level. I want to see all the documents that they are already expired. So basically if I just go here and I sort it from newer to older, you will see the documents on the top they have a revision date somewhere in the future but if I go down you will find a few documents that the revision date is past due. So let's filter it for these documents. So if I come here I can say modify this view or edit current view. I scroll down and now just like before I define a filter. This filter is going to be next revision date is less than or equal to today. And if I just click on OK it shows me a list of everything in all the subfolders that has 
the next revision date equal to or less than today date. Now think for a second and see if you can possibly do it on a network drive. So in this short video, we learned what list and library views are, how we can modify existing views, how we can create our own views, and how we can filter, sort, and group items in a SharePoint view. And it was just an introduction to the views. Uh, there is a lot you can do with the views. As you can get into it, you will find different avenues that will impress even your SharePoint consultants in your organization. Create your own views. It makes your life a whole lot easier. Thank you for watching.